This winter, I took my tiny van for a trip to Greece and Bulgaria. It was nice being back on the road, sleeping next to the sea and feeling like every day was an exciting new adventure. But there's a downside to it. I, surprise surprise, drove a lot. I think I did 1000 miles or 1500 kilometers, which is what I normally drive in 6 months. This is why I decided that I would ditch the van for one month to compensate part of my traveling emissions and ease up some of my guilt. Keep in mind that I live in a fairly rural village in Italy, the closest town being an hour and a half walking distance and without any public transport. The only non-fossil fuel transport I used in the past is a bike, but to be honest, I think I used it less than 10 times in the past two years because of the hills. I have mashed potato ties and climbing the steep roads to get to my house is a very daunting prospect to be attempted only on very good days. That's why I decided to go for an electric bike. Not gonna lie, when using my normal bike, I would curse at people with electric bikes overtaking me whilst I was struggling. That's cheating, I would think. But I eventually put my ego aside and realized that an electric bike used every day is better than a non-electric bike piling up dust. Let me introduce to you my companion for this challenge, the Himiwe Cruiser Step 3. Himiwe did reach out to me and offered to let me try this beast in exchange of a review and let me tell ya, I didn't need much convincing. The bike needed some assembly, which I was a bit worried about. Once I went on a mountain bike trail with my bike fork installed the wrong way and another biker had to stop me to tell me and I remember not understanding why he kept repeating the fork whilst pointing at my bike. Anyway, this is just to say that I'm really not bike savvy. Luckily, the assembly was fairly straightforward. It took me about an hour and a half, but I think if you had any knowledge of bikes and didn't lose one of the bolts in the grass and spent 20 minutes looking for it, it probably would have taken you less than 30 minutes. The battery came already charged, but I topped it off just in case, and the next day I went for my first ride. The bike has a 750 watt geared hub motor with 17.5 amp hour batteries. I chose this model because I wanted a bike that was comfortable but that would allow me to ride on many different terrains like rocky or sandy soil. Also, I needed something that would be able to carry a decent amount of cargo since I'll be using it to do all my groceries. The Step 3 can carry up to 350 pounds, 150 kilos, and has crazy 26 by 4 inch fat tires, so I think I'll be okay. On my first ride, I tried all five levels of pedal assist and I was having so much fun as you can see from my face. I then went for a test on an off-road track where I nearly cut a snake in two. I kid you not, I stopped just in time. The downhill bit is bumpy, but the bike felt stable and I absorbed the shocks quite well. I guess that's because of the adjustable alloy front suspension fork, which I hope I mounted the right way this time. All of a sudden, it felt like a world of mountain paths that I'd never, ever, ever attempt with a normal bike opened to me. I also tried it without any petrol assist uphill and well, I couldn't go very far. This is a heavy bike, it's a 32 kilograms bike. So obviously, without any petrol assist going uphill, you gotta struggle a little bit. Depending on road conditions and use, one battery can give you up to 60 miles or 100 kilometers, so I just hope I'll never run out of juice. One, I had a dentist appointment about 20 kilometers away. Having no clue of how long it would take me, I left two hours earlier to make sure I make it in time. That's the road I was supposed to take. Whoops. Uh... On the unplanned route I ended up taking, I saw not one, but two herons chilling in the field. I was too amazed to take my camera out, so I guess you just have to use your imagination. There's a chicken waiting for the bus stop. Where are you going? At arrival, I realized that fat tires don't fit in the normal bike racks, which kind of sucks. The bike does have a kickstand, so I guess that will do. It was the first time that I had left the bike unattended and was afraid of getting it stolen, so I removed the battery and locked it to a drain pipe, which, let's be real, is like not locking it at all. Okay, I'm all done. Let's. Right back home. 
On my way back I kind of got lost because I was trying to find alternatives to the main road and finally I stopped at the lake because, well, you gotta stop at the lake. than half of the battery left which considering that I went pretty much the whole way with either four or five of the power still just because I wanted to see how much it could do I think it's it's quite good the thing that I use the van mostly is to go to the post office to ship my packages I make and sell handmade jewellery and visit the post office usually once or twice a week. It is not my favourite task, in fact I cannot dread it and if you ever visited an Italian post office you'll know why. But this time, while biking, I had a big smile on my face. There's just something so freeing about biking and I'm definitely not the first one to say it. Be it the fresh air, the birds singing or just knowing that I wasn't spending my hard earned money in dirty fuel, it felt good. I think I need a new helmet. I look like a huge egg with this on. <laughs> Got some potatoes. Potatoes! Every two to three weeks I head off to what I call my city day, where I do all the tasks that can be done close by. I go to my therapy appointment, I go to the organic shop and often go thrift shopping, although I didn't do that this time because I was afraid of getting the bike stolen, I really need to find a solution for that. This is the part of the challenge I was most worried about, because the city takes about 45 minutes to get there by car, so I assumed it would take forever. But I was pleasantly surprised. I was able to ride through small villages that I never get to see since I always take the faster main road and for the most part to ride by the riverside. I did pass a few normal bikes on my way which made me feel a mix of guilt and smugness. I made it to town, it took me around an hour and a half and I'm really really happy because I still have a full battery! I then ran my usual errands, saw the biggest congregation of paragliders in my life and started heading back. I did get an overpriced pizza at the organic shop and ate it by the river. I will say, everything tastes better after a nice ride. Last hill. Week 3, other than going to the post office, I used the bike to go forage some Silian and Vulgaris, which around here they call Carletti, Stridoli, Bubolini. <laughs> this is a delicious wild herb, one of the few ones that doesn't taste bitter and is very sought after. After a few unsuccessful stops, I found a very abundant patch and was able to fill up my basket. This plant is actually really easy to recognize by its sound. It makes like a squeaky sound. Let's see if you can hear it. <laughs> the bike has a throttle, which is really handy when you're going uphill because you can kind of give you a little, a little hoop and then you can start paddling. I've been so lucky, I've got more than enough to make a nice risotto and maybe a pasta sauce and I actually stopped to give some to the lady that told me about those because when I got here I didn't know what they were. My 
my fridge is starting to look a little sad. Um, <laughs> I think it's time to go and get some first rate shopping done. This was my biggest grocery shop yet. Going for the big shopping trolley was a mistake. I overestimated the space I have in the panniers and uh, had to sacrifice and crush a package of nachos. Overall though, I was pleased with the amount I was able to fit in the panniers and how the added weight didn't make a difference on the uphill climb. At the end of the week I went for my final post office ride, which by the way there were many more visits to the post office during the 4 weeks challenge, but I thought I'd only include a few because I bet you get the point. today without a car challenge is done and honestly it felt great I did not miss driving at all in fact I finished it I think two weeks ago and I only used the van twice and that's only to do things like you know going and getting materials for the garden or wood for projects or uh, to go places where I need to take Zuka the foster dog although I am thinking of adding a little trailer to the um, bike so I can take dogs around. Obviously it's spring so the weather has been lovely and I've been lucky not to get any rain. I think in winter it might get a little bit harder but I really am gonna try to um, keep this habit for as long as possible. As you see in the video I'm not a heavy car user uh, on my day to day life. I work from home and I understand that now everybody can do the switch like I can but I do think that everybody can make an effort to use um, cars a little bit less and use either public transport or bikes or feet whatever a little bit more. I'm not here to say that electric bikes are 100% perfect because they aren't. They still use lithium in the production for the batteries and we know that you know extraction and disposal of lithium can be an issue. Uh, but I think that compared to using my older van that does consume a lot of fuel, it's still a better option. Also, now that the weather is getting nicer, I'm charging my battery um, through solar panels. So I'm getting free recharges, which is kind of cool. If you want to be picky, the bestest thing would be to just use a normal bike and your own sweat to go places. But you you try and going up that hill with 30 kilos of groceries in a hot day you'd be dead um, and I think that most humans we're just lazy and uh, I think that we need to find compromises between lowering our emissions without giving up all of our comforts to get more and more people on board as for costs electric bikes are expensive but so are good quality mountain and road bikes and uh, the amount of time that it's going to take you to amortize the cost of such purchase is going to depend on how much you use your car how much you consumes and how much of your commuting you can switch to um, biking for me i calculated that that would take a little bit over a year um, but the cool thing is that not only you lower your emissions but you also benefit in terms of mood and health and uh, that's one thing that I thought before of electric bikes I thought it was a very lazy way to get around but I was wrong because you can really get a workout if you wanted to you just need to lower your pedal assist but if you want to go for a meeting or you want to go on a date without looking disheveled then you can um, hump up the um, pedal assist so you can get there looking nice. One big drawback that I mentioned in the video is that I am um, afraid of getting it stolen because um, it's a really cool bike it doesn't go unnoticed and although I do lock it and uh, I remove the battery I'm still worried about leaving it unattended for longer than 30 minutes so if you have any suggestions about that then let me know um, and talking about batteries actually Himiwe sent me a second battery so I can go for longer trips and even multi-day trips which is what I'm planning for the end of the month I might be going to Austria but uh, yeah we'll see how that goes in the meantime, um, I will leave the link in the description uh, of the bike if you want to go and have a look and I shall see you very soon. Bye!